I was always kind of shy. And then the more I grew up, the more I oh, hated myself. And, uh, I, you know, I was have a strong inferiority complex. And, uh, but there were, there were times when I noticed that uh, I, you know, I wasn't like, I mean, most of the time I was thinking about myself and my inferiority or whatever, especially around people, more relaxed by myself. And, you know, I end up enjoying being, my, being by myself. I still do. But uh, uh, I noticed that uh, there, sometimes I would feel like really good and spontaneous for no reason. And I would be able to be cool like the other guys. And uh, other times I was just, you know, oh, what am I, I don't have nothing to say. I have no, not to, I'm not funny. I'm just thinking about myself all the time. Or whatever. And uh, so I, I did notice a distinct contrast between those two states or whatever you want to call it, positions, uh, ways of perceiving. Uh, and, uh, and then, uh, uh, well, I got involved in drugs and, and then, uh, and then there was a one time, uh, I, I mentioned this once before on these talks. Uh, one time I was just, I was kind of walking down, this, I was in the woods by the street and I had this, uh, like, uh, I don't, I don't remember if I was high on marijuana or if I was just, uh, straight, but, uh, I had this distinct, very, uh, definite sense that nothing made any difference and that that was a really good thing huh. it, it just felt good i was like totally free there for like egoless there for uh that was that was about eight, 19 18 maybe then and uh so that i think it's this uh this realization or awareness that there's a distinct uh, ability to be free and a and a distinct ability to be negative and, and, and feeling bad. And that there's, and I had to find out the explanation for it. And I think that's what I'm, I am finding that out now. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've always gradually become, you know, more and more sort of aware uh, of, of uh, what might, what might uh, be uh able to get me in a free state. And well, one of the things happens to be uh, mantra and, uh, and, and this, this uh, involvement with this particular school. And uh, so and I, you know, I'm happy with my progress. And, uh, that's that, I guess. As I was noticing today, today I noticed that you know, we all live our lives in looking for a sense of ease. I mean, almost like every moment is we're after ease, but we we might not notice that it's already here. And uh, I think uh, you know, that I am noticing that more and more. Uh, that it's not. And the sense of ease is not something that comes due to conditions. It's just kind of like, uh, rather than most of the time uh, being feeling inferior, most of you know you can you can also, also sort of most of the time sense that there's not a problem. That uh, even if you are in pain or you're dying, you you could still. You don't have to be feeling negative about it. it. Doesn't doesn't help or whatever. It doesn't. It's just a distraction. And uh, so it's it's just. Uh, and oh, I also noticed that it's like a uh, invisible bias of believing in an individual self. It's like creates sets up like an invisible bias that that has to be that we end up serving that rather than uh, uh, just uh, uh, seeing that there is no, that, that this uh, being here is like a, a totally shared situation. It's not a, 
situation of me being against or having to do something about anything. Uh, it's just there's it's just is kind of a like an ease of being. You know. So anyway, I find that I, I find that nice that I'm uh, beginning to recognize that more and more. Any disagreement? <laughs> oh, sounds good. So, I mean, the mind, of course, might want to make a con concept out of the sense of ease and say, oh, I'm, I'm right about being, about things being easy. <laughs> but that gets contradicted all the time because we share not only easiness, we share difficulty. Or it could be considered difficulty if you, depending on your attitude or whatever. Anyway, uh, I, I, I had a, I explained, uh, for some reason I was able to explain this clearer today, or I see it more clearer today than usual. And I was able to explain it to a friend of mine that's uh, struggling with alcoholism. And, uh, and uh, they're uh, making a, uh, some progress in that they're stopping for extended periods of time, but then uh, so I was ex explaining to her how uh, alcohol makes us, you know, it, it become, at least for an alcoholic especially, it's like the, the one thing we can always count on to make us feel ease. And it, it's, it's like the go-to thing and uh, uh, we might not notice that ease is possible through other means. Uh, and uh, she, well, that person was, uh, uh, took it, was, was sober at the time and uh, seemed to have no argument. Uh, whereas usually I would talk about this stuff uh, like non-duality, uh, trying to explain uh, self-observation and then the value of uh, of of making the attempt to to uh, self-observe and, and try to open more. And uh, she would always be uh, very very uh, resistant, like a, like a, it's like a, a front an affront to her pride or something. Which, which if you know, if we go through life thinking we know good enough that we, everything's fine, uh, I, I'll get through the struggles. Uh, I'll, however, I'll be in somehow in some modicum of control, and I know what I'm doing. You know, it is kind of an affront to pride. Uh, if that's where you're coming from, but we we don't even realize where we're coming from. Uh, if, if we think we are a separate self, you know. And, uh, so hopefully I can get her to come around more. She said she'll let me talk, she'll let me talk about this stuff at least 10 minutes a day now. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully I'll be able to maintain uh, clarity because sometimes I can't explain it as good because sometimes I'm more feeling like a sense of self and I'm kind of like, you know, conceptualizing it. And that, that's not uh, as uh, clarifying or whatever, I don't, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Sounds like you're on the right track. Yeah, I feel like I am. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I left a message, or a little note with her. When I, well, I might as well say it's my girlfriend. You know? uh, it's probably fairly obvious anyway. Uh, to uh, when, I, when I leave today, uh, look at this note. And the note was, uh, see if you can um, notice a present sense of ease and see if you can sink into it 
and just see if if there's any kind of a like a mild bliss. Do you know this? That was that was their little note that I wrote her. She said, you know, she, they, you know try it. She she's been into meditation in the past, and, uh, but I hasn't for quite a while. Uh, I saw this book online today too. I, it had a cool. Uh, I just saw the co the cover and uh, or the title and uh, looked it up and it had high recommendations from the readers, like a lot of books do. But the the title of the book was kind of cool. It was this? It's called. <laughs> The No Self Help Book. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> so I ordered a, I ordered a cheap copy or a used copy. See what it's about. <laughs> the experience. There's another book called The Experience of No Self. That was that's quite interesting too. That, have you, uh, Andrew? Have you ever heard of um, the lady? Uh, if I could think of her name, that wrote. Have you heard of that book, The Experience of No Self? Uh, I don't think so. By Bernard, Bernadette Roberts. Have you heard oh, of Bernadette Roberts? No, I haven't actually. Oh. She's uh, was she a devotee of some particular teacher uh, or? Actually, no. She was a uh, a nun. Oh, okay. her, her, she belonged to uh, like a contemplative, I think a nun type of thing. A contemplative order? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she kind of dropped away from it, but her life kept, uh, she would go into these states of uh, uh, like pre quite profound, uh, trippy, uh, by her descriptions, uh, senses of, of no self experiences. Yeah. Went on to write a few books about it, and uh, she and uh, very very interesting books. And uh, yeah, I've heard of her. She's a, a actually a classic uh, Christian mystic. Yeah, right, right. She's she's quoted in a lot of things, and she, you know, I don't know, it was a hundred years ago or something, but um, you know, she lived a contemplative life, and she went through the dark night of the soul and yeah, did you read read some of it i haven't i've i haven't really read it but i've heard a lot of her, uh, heard a lot about her she's right, right. she's quite uh famous in in those uh circles right the, the only thing that i i had uh was found a little bit fishy about uh, what she says was i've read most of her books if not maybe all of them and uh she she was at odds with uh, like even Buddhism and and she said she, she said she said she had, had never talked to anybody that uh, where their experience totally matched her uh, like her she attributes her, attributes her uh, experience of no self or whatever to uh to god and it's it's almost like she has uh a definite uh a opinion of knowing what what god is and, and i mean that's that's not saying it uh very that's just a very uh sort of a biased uh way of saying what's but uh but uh, uh Seems like she takes odds with every critiques everybody, which I that you know other than herself or something. But uh, that's just uh, maybe that's just my my sense, and, and uh, so whatever. But that was that was only like a little bit where she's mentioned things that gave me that impression. It was just a couple. Of Things she said, so it might not really be a valid criticism. 
she lived a hundred years ago, I think you said, uh, Kathleen. Yeah, it, oh, I, okay. yeah, something like that. It was a long time. Oh, ago. Bernadette Roberts. Uh, she uh, still, she might be still alive, actually. No, I don't think so. Well, if she died, it wasn't. It was only in the last uh, ten or twenty years. Oh, okay, maybe I, I don't really know the toll thing. I know she's quoted a lot, and I she, think she might still even be alive. It's possible. Really, I I don't know, but anyway, she um you know went through this uh, experience, and she was good at uh, describing you know this sort of uh, her own from her own you know it's her own story, yeah, her own yeah. experience, and so for whatever that's worth, you know, may not be everybody's experience, but it's uh. Nevertheless, so interesting. Oh, yeah. She has a great or very interesting way of uh, putting things. And she gets into philosophy and psychology. She addresses uh, like Carl Jung's uh, point of view. And that, that's where, you know, things can get, it can get like, it can look like you're having opinions when you're just really coming from your experience or whatever. Yeah. I'll be glad to accept any critiques of what I said. Yeah, I'd rather get back into our stuff. I guess I do have one question that sometimes uh, comes up. Uh, you know, in, in these discussions, we talk about uh, uh, no or being aware of the self or or, or uh, um, well, how do you, how does John say it sometimes? Uh, uh, just uh, uh, <laughs> it's not coming to me it's the right way of saying it. Uh, but anyway, if if uh, we do try to kind of talk of it as if we're talking about a a me, it's like the, the I am, I guess you could say, and it, it, because of I guess it's because of language. Uh, and we also talk about nothing, the presence of nothing or whatever, whether that's you know, what that what that might be. But, uh, but uh, so it's like, a, I guess it's a trick of language. You, you, you're talking about a me, but you're also talking about nothing. Uh, it just seems like how, how can that be? How can you have, be talking about me and talking about nothing at the same time. I don't think. What's your question? So uh, it seems like some. It seems like a, almost like a contradiction in our in our talks that we're talking about me, and uh, and we're talking about nothing. But if, I guess, uh, of course, language assume just by the nature of language, you're talking about something. So is nothing nothing, or is is am I nothing, am, uh, or is, is am I something and nothing, or or am I nothing? <laughs> Your formlessness, pretending to be form and interacting with a form-based world through an illusory existence that you believe is true, so you sort of identify as I am somebody else. Yeah. Formlessness is is everywhere. It's animating all things. It's doing everything by itself. And yet, when you click with this body, you say, "I exist." And from that "I exist" standpoint, now you know existence, and you see a world. It's spontaneous. And then you get the wrong concept of experiencing a world through a body, because as your own self, you have no experience, no experiencer. Yeah. 
Now, once you have a body, you could easily, as we say, we remain with the I am, the sense of presence, the selfless self. If you hold attention on presence or the source of attention, Mm -hmm. Once you're here, then release attention, and that's it. You yeah. can do it right now. Yeah, yeah. I feel I kind of feel uh, something going on. Uh, yeah, you, you, you can be watching television, and now look for the sense or the the, the feeling, the source of this seeing of watching television. And then release the attention. Uh, and this, that you are. And you only know this because this body is available. And it's a lump of nothing that you're keeping alive, basically, or keeping the semblance or the appearance of being alive. Uh, yeah. And how you're saying, how can we say it's nothing and something? Because this I exist appeared to something, <laughs> which is that you are. Mm. If, if, if there was nothing there, yeah. then this I exist could not appear to anything because you have to be there, of course, you're prior to every experience. And now you forget about the experience because you're prior to every experience. So you can take all the worldly experiences and just kind of crush them and throw them away. But you do this with mantra. And you do this with remaining with yourself. Yeah. You sit there even for one moment. And now you're here. This source of seeing. And then you release any concept that you may have of attention. Basically attention, holding attention. And then releasing this attention. And, or awareness, holding awareness. And then releasing the sense of holding awareness. Because the sense of attention and the sense of holding is all through the illusion. That's why Maharaj says, concentrate on the concentrator. And then the concentrator disappears. Because you concentrate on the concentrator. And that, that concentrator dissolves within the concentration. Yeah. And there's just this, this formlessness. There's nothing. And all of this form has appeared upon that. And that, that sense of presence is in every being from the ant that wishes to survive all the way to the elephant. It's, it's, it's the same. It's everywhere. When it leaves this body, it won't have lost anything. And you say, oh, what happens when this body falls? Well, this body falls, presence continues, and presence is still animating all this other stuff inside the illusory world. I've just lost this telescope to see into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about the air, all the air all around us. If, if this body drops dead, do you all stop breathing? This is an empty world. Name and form is given by misunderstanding. All, this, all these five elements are getting together. A pig gets together with a pig, makes a little pig, and then that little pig has life because the presence is animating that little pig. Then the little pig meets another little pig and they have a little pig. Or if you want to talk about the family tree, this lump of goo gets together with this lump of goo, creates a little lump of goo. But now, because in this human body form, we like to label the forms, everything label, label, label. So we say, this is John. This lump of goo is now John. Now John goes out and makes a little lump of goo and he gets to name something, but it's all the presence. Without presence, this body is a dead body, a lump of goo. So it's just that. And once, once you've touched this even one moment, it dissolves all concepts. And then I don't have to speak about anything from the point of view of the illusory world. 
And yet I can hear everybody's different perspective on the illusory world. It's illusion. There's no true, no false. The sad guru, this sense of presence is the ultimate teacher manifesting itself as Sri Ramakat Maharaj, Sri Nizagadatta Maharaj, Sri uh, Siddharmeshwar Maharaj in our lineage. But even that, see, our lineage doesn't say you have to see everything else through the conceptual lens of our lineage. No, because our lineage says forget about all concepts. There's no concepts. If you have concepts, then you're not grasping the teaching. So now try and argue like Maharaj says, you've seen the whole elephant. If somebody says, oh, elephant is like this. Okay, it's nice. Oh, elephant is like this. Okay, it's nice. No, but you don't understand. I know the elephant. Okay, that's very nice. <laughs> You know yourself in a real sense. You're undisturbed. You're not collecting information for a body form that you are not. You're not trying to gather knowledge for a body form that you are not. And all knowledge came along with the body and you're not body. Boom, cut that right there. All relations came along with the body and you're not body. Okay, cut that right there. And yet, while in this illusory existence, enjoy yourself. formlessly aware of just being and not even always aware of being because being once you release the attention of presence with presence as Maharaj says concentrate on the concentrator and the concentrator dissolves within the concentration and then you go about your daily activities but there's nobody here anymore like you're not you know you're not looking to present anything. You're not looking to get anything out of this illusory existence. And if you are, then you observe your thoughts about that and understand then it's just more meditation is needed because the conviction is not all. Oh, this presence is all there is and I am that. And you're here. And that's nothing, no experience, no experience here. And no need to figure anything out. If I'm figuring something out, then I'm no longer prior to mind. I've dove down into the body-based illusion. Mind, ego, intellect is working to try and figure out what's illusion anyway. See, that's the crazy thing. Even if I figure out everything there is to figure out, it's all trash because it came along with the body and you're not body. So remain with your selfless self, let the world do what the world does, let this body form do what it does and remain with your selfless self. There's not just language, but the body, the body too that perpetuates the illusion. Well, you're prior to language. For the first word, you're prior to. There's no words. Prior to being this, did you know any words? No. Prior to being this, were you thinking any thoughts? No. No. When the spirit clicked with the body, this is Maharaja's words, when the spirit clicked with the body, you said, I. Along with I, so many things appear. <laughs> now we have knowledge. We have mind, ego, intellect. We have actions, we have doership, we have objects, we have mom and dad, and, and all of a sudden the subject that is all became subject object in duality. You have all the parts of the elephant and just the parts. Well, you're, you're, cause you're, and see, that's why now the conviction is when I sat in meditation with mantra, presence reflected in a clear mind, also that I, I am that, nothing, 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 nothing. So that's the reality. 
and that's in the background of every one of your experiences is that reality how to stay in touch with that during like i don't know um like those experiences that have like the deep hooks whether it's you know trauma or or, or what have you but like those really intense um moments because if you've been practicing in the meditation and you've known yourself it'll be a natural reaction you've trained your mind not to go out mm. but to remain just remain inward you use this mind to direct attention and and like we said when if you sit here and you're seeing and everything's here but you're really actually facing the other way so to speak where you're inwardly seeing and you start to feel that sense of presence and now pay attention to that sense of presence and then release the attention and from that point you're you're nothing and all of this has appeared only due to this sense of existence. And you only know this sense of existence through the body-based illusion. But that's there. You are that. When you say uh, nothing, uh, I, meant, I know it's in uh, one passage in the dust mode, I think, I think it was in there he mentions the form of the self or i think that's what he said or this form of the, the and he's referring to the uh, not your own self but the self i guess the formless holder of the body don't try to say this self or that self or there's there's one self it's animating all these bodies but when he said what do you think he meant when he said form of the self? The form of the self is it's formless. You're the formless holder of the body. So There's like no form, form of the self. Although the self takes many forms, yeah. it's formless. And that's how it can take many forms, just like water. I can pour water into a cup. I can pour it into a bottle. I can pour it on the floor. I can pour it in the sink. Because it's as formless as we could understand formlessness within the body-based illusion. Also, we can say space. You can take the space and put it in a jar or you can put it in a box or, or you can have it in this room and say that the space is in this room. But formlessness is formlessness. The formless holder of the body, the one that's not growing, not aging, not dying, not having any illness. That's why if the body is told, you're told, oh, you have a little bit of illness, this and that, Remain with your, oh yeah, you, you see this because the, I, I am unaffected. I'm the formless presence, the formless holder of this body. And how can anything that happens to this body affect me? No, no, no. I'll no longer have the sense of individualized existence when this body is no more. And as this body fades and the essence is no longer, you know, it dries up, so to speak, like a banana rotting on the counter, then presence is no longer able to be using this body, but presence is, it's everywhere. It's all things. It's beyond any, there's no birth, no death. And see, once you know this, once you just touch yourself in one moment, birth and death concept, gone who's born how how lump of goo is born formless holder of the body says i am born lump of goo can no longer hold formless holder of the body formless holder of the body says oh i am dying and then wonders of course what happens to me after <laughs> this body falls where am i well you're everywhere so and all of this was illusion because you're formless. Nothing is there. No thing. Nothing. All things are appearances within the formlessness. No thing. 
Okay, I found the line where he says this because I wrote, I took a note of it. It's, okay. The line is, uh, association with the form of the body creates doubt and destroys contentment. One should not swerve from the firm conviction of one's true self form. Yeah, the formless holder of the body. You could say presence because you, you're, what, what you just said is if you get mixed up with the body, there's a lot of suffering. Of course, because you believe that you're suffering and that all these things are actually happening or that they matter to you who is formless. So what you just read is another way of saying remain with your selfless self. There's no disturbance. Use the body for what it's meant to be. You dip your cup into the nectar of immortality and just enjoy the selfless self intoxication, intense in selfless self intoxication. You are that. And that's it. That's the truth. You don't have to listen to any more lectures, or read any more books. As Maharaj says, all the teachers, all the books, all the masters, everything is all pointing to one thing. Except your selfless self, there's no God, no Brahman, no Paramatman, no master, nothing except your selfless self. Now you know this, now you must have direct experience because otherwise you sit there and you say, well, I don't know, maybe there's something other more or maybe this is that, or so have direct experience. Master says how to have direct experience, meditation. Meditation is not just sitting like this, <clears throat> Om, and or chanting mantra. Meditation is in every moment, remaining with your selfless self. Through mantra, if you really have a body identification and you have thoughts flowing, as it was mentioned, like what do you do when these very serious things are happening? You remain with mantra. You'll observe these things are passing without you having to get involved in them. And mantra erases all the concepts slowly, silently, permanently. And then you become more interested in your selfless self than you do with thoughts about the illusory world. And when you're more interested in your selfless self than you are in thoughts about the illusory world, thoughts will naturally slow down. It's a monkey wrench in the thought factory. And as the thoughts are slowing down, the, oh, hold on for one second. Hey, Vincent, I, I'm in my uh, little talk thing. Uh, I'll call you back. I figured you'd be busy. Okay. All right. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Bye, Bye, Vincent. Okay. Sorry about that. So actually, so, go yeah. ahead. This is a, uh, for me anyway, this journey has been a, uh, a good, I've taken interest in, in it, and it's a good replacement for alcohol. Because it's so, this interest in the selfless self is a, in a worthy. The selfless self, the spiritual intoxication that you get, and I can say this from my firsthand knowledge, drinking, you know. there ain't no drugs or any alcohol on this planet that can make you feel like you feel when you are in selfless self intoxication with your own self. That's part of the reason why I was blessed with a body that craved these feelings of otherness or these intense feelings so that when this sense of presence came, man, that's all I wanted. I mean, if you could bottle it, thank God it's free. Because otherwise, I, I would be selling myself like every day. <laughs> because the, the, the sense of presence, this, you could call it the, you know, the, the presence of God is what I had called it for a while. And this and that, this presence, how can you want anything other than yourself? And how can you allow anything in the illusory world to take you away from yourself? It's not possible. Not worth it. And, and if you've really, truly tasted yourself just a little taste, you come back for more. 
I mean, that's and 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 I was just as frank with Maharaj as I as I was talking just now. I said, you know, I think it's a great blessing actually that this body was in the mode of craving a high, basically, mm. and presence. That was the best. That was absolutely, you remain with presence. Forget about the illusory world. You talk about God being a jealous God. Because if you start <laughs> trying to give credence to other things, then you're not concentrating or, or worshiping your selfless self. It just doesn't make sense. Mm. And I think everyone, we, we could turn this off right now and you just sit there and remain with your selfless self. And as soon as that penny drops, so to speak, oh, so that I, I am that. Okay, now remain here. Go about your job. Go about your duties. But every time, always check in with yourself. Oh, here it is. And then eventually it won't do that. Like I said, you hold attention on the source of attention and then release that attention. It's... Mm. And this is only available to know yourself in this way because you have a body form available. This body form is not out there to go and acquire money or acquire stuff or acquire praise or acquire any of these things because that's from the illusory world. And since it's illusion, it's temporary, as Maharaj says, temporary intoxicants, temporary painkillers. Remaining with your selfless self dissolves all this. There's no pain. There's no, I mean, of course, pain. Yes, if somebody comes and, and grabs my arm and, and you know puts a, a mark on my arm, that's gonna hurt. I get slapped in the face, that's gonna hurt too. Because this body is hooked up with all kinds of sensory input that's going to the formlessness that you are within the illusory existence. And we can say the same about laying down at night and having a dream. All these characters are moving about and doing all this stuff, but it's just you. And the same consciousness that creates the dream world creates the waking world. It's only one consciousness. The concept that you are a body or someone is this divider or the sense of duality in that one consciousness because you say, I am waking up. I am going to sleep. I am dreaming. No, consciousness is moving all the characters, all the forms about in whatever way it likes. And you're the one that says, I'm awake or I'm dreaming. Now I go to sleep. Oh, look, a dream world. But it's formless consciousness creating form. Oh, now I wake up. Oh, look, another dream world. Formless consciousness creating form. So how would how would you address uh, my okay? Say I I'm I'm getting a good uh, uh, sense of what this is all about, and I want somebody else to to get to get the same sense. Uh, you know, how would you what would you say about me wanting somebody else to get what I think I'm. A, I've got whatever. Well, there is no other others and there is no you. So all <laughs> speaking is spontaneous speaking. And if there's a you there that's speaking, then you're speaking about the illusion. If there's no you that's speaking, you're speaking about yourself through the illusion. And once you know yourself in a real sense, Speak if you like to speak. Like Maharaj says, lay your carpet out and start speaking. Don't collect any money because that's a huge no-no. Plus, 
again, truly, when you know yourself in a real sense, you will <laughs> you'll die rolling laughing at the thought of collecting money from other people to talk to them <laughs> about you you just you, no you can't really do that unless you do have an experience or a spiritual experience where you've kind of seen something or felt something and now you want to start start talking ad nauseum about it then you may want to collect money because there's still an idea that there's someone there who can collect money and there's someone there other than your own self who would pay money to hear you vomit spirituality from uh, for them otherwise it's spontaneous speaking and you're not speaking to anyone you're hearing some words and they're speaking some words and there's listening and there's speaking speaker and listener are one and the same so If you have a concept that you're trying to convince or trying to teach, then there's someone there That's creating the form of a teacher. Be formless. That's your true nature. Any form that appears is illusion. And once you know yourself in a real sense, this will be quite evident. You'll no longer see others. Remember the German guy uh, laughing? Very interesting. Yeah, I mean, again, it's a full-time pursuit. If we're sitting here only on, what is this, Tuesday night, listening to a little bit, maybe listen to some other masters throughout the week, maybe read a little bit of something, this and that, maybe meditate a little bit, maybe have a, when we're out walking the dog, we feel a sense of presence. Oh, that's very nice. I'm really transcending. That's not going to do it. It's got to be a full time job. Remain with your selfless self. Do your job, do your duties, but be always with you. I think we said before, Maharaj says, be with you always. Always isn't only when I'm in traffic and I have nothing better to do, or when I'm in a line and I have nothing good to do. Always is always. And as soon as you catch yourself, oh, look at that. I'm getting involved in this illusory existence. Now you know the truth. Don't allow your mind to go off into the, oh, it's going to be a terrible day. I have so much stuff to do. No, no, no. I start that thought train going and I remain with myself with self. No, no, no. Because it's not true. Now I pay attention to the only truth, the only reality, which is my own self. And now from this position, I go and continue to do what I need doing, do my job, do my duties. But you don't, you don't lose yourself. You can't, you won't want to. Hmm. You really aren't a separate entity. There's no separation. You're the formlessness. Discover this for your own self through direct experience, and that's it. Then let the world be the world. Let it do what it does. Forms appear and disappear. You remain.
So while you were speaking, while you were speaking, I heard in the background there was like a voice coming through. It was from my phone. Uh, uh, somebody I had it covered up. It wasn't. Might not have heard it, but uh, it was distracting me because I could hear it. Uh, so, it, so I'm in a sense. The real me, uh, I'm dividing it up again, but. Uh, the real you doesn't was, know yourself. I was getting distracted, but was it me that's getting distracted or was distraction just happening? Or, you know, I, I was letting myself be distracted or whatever. I don't know how to put it. I was... The distraction is anything other than your own self. It's a distraction because it's not true. You're following it, and with your attention, you're making it seem true when it's not. So every distraction is just an illusion that you're creating some kind of meaning for. Remain with yourself the self. No distraction. Well, it's uh, 8 12. Ah, yes, yes. It's been good. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Go. Thank you very Thank you much. Good night, everyone. Nice evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Bye bye.